At any given moment, on any given day, look around the ITF and you'll see passion, strength, and integrity exhibited at all levels. Passion drives us and motivates us. It gives us the good times and the strength to get through the tough times. Integrity is what drives that passion. Unrelenting commitment to getting the job done right. Whether it's a love of aviation and enthusiasm for the science and engineering behind it, or a fierce dedication to America's warfighter. To deliver the world's greatest fighter to support the strength of the U.S. military. It's passion that makes this job more than just a job. When I think of the ITF, I, I think of passion, strength, uh, integrity. Passion, really what I think of is, is dedication, and whether that's been the maintenance folks working every weekend, whether that's been the supply guys coming up with creative ways to get us parts, the age folks showing up at two in the morning to position equipment, our engineers uh, pouring over minutia of, of missions to make sure that we get every piece of data out of it. Uh, the next thing I think of is strength. The thing that strikes me about the ITF is the cohesion and the fact that we're so able to fill in for each other, to work with one another, and it's really the Lockheed, the government team, active duty, military, support contractor, and then finally integrity. The, the thing I'm most proud about about the ITF is that we've never lost our way in terms of being objective evaluators of this platform because we know our responsibility is to get it right the first time. There's, there's no second chances in combat and everyone here knows that. Regardless of program pressures, cost pressures, schedule pressures, bad press, whatever's going on, the people here take their job uh, seriously and they do it with integrity. They're not afraid to tell the facts and they're not afraid uh, to report on what they see and to do it objectively uh, and to do it in a way that makes the platform better. At the end of the day, we know that we've done the right thing and that we've all go home at the end of the day uh, knowing that we didn't compromise on anything that we've done here. Reflecting back on 2016, uh, it just leaves me in awe. The number of things that this ITF pulled off is impressive. We went into it calling it the year of the weapon, but in reality, the passion, strength, and integrity of this team was present daily on many, many other things beyond weapons. Whether that was getting 1,000 hours on AF-1, high energy brake testing on AF-4, or getting the Air Force IOC software sealed up, all those things happened in parallel. On a daily basis, the ITF would take this jet to the limits of its envelope, executing high-risk, high-G missions. Although we definitely didn't treat that as a common occurrence or as a thing to be complacent about, it was something that this ITF does daily in the midst of all the other tasks that we have going on. Uh, in the first part of the year alone, we had the first AIM-9X separation off of AF-1, which then allows us to open up that capability to the entire Air Force and eventually to the partners. Another unique first in this program is the fact that we're simultaneously working on partner weapons as we also prove out U.S. weapons. A perfect example of that this past year has been the Paveway 4 and ASRAM work that we've done that are United Kingdom weapons. Uh, we recently had the first Paveway 4 drop off an F-35 and shack the target. We've been doing uh, ASRAM integration on a variety of testing to include multi-ship work as well as single ship work. It's a great testament to the team here that we have both U.S. and U.K. folks embedded in the ITF, as well as partners around the world that take that data, look at it, make the fixes, and we move on seamlessly as we find those problems. As we moved on into the middle of the year, we also started making some significant steps towards airborne gunfire, as well as high energy braking and high sink rate landing, as well as the 3F software. The 3F software is really the heart of this jet and what makes it special. 
That's going to be the FOC software, the full operational capability, and what this aircraft was intended to do. One of the ways we identified that could quickly find and fix problems this past year was the use of super scenarios, which is really a fancy word for putting out a bunch of jets, a bunch of targets, and a bunch of threats all at the same time, and stressing the system as much as we possibly can to find problems and figure out where there's things that we can do better. It was actually the ITF that found some stability problems and came up with the ideas of how to fix it and test it out. As we have been true to form in the past, the ITF excels at being objective, finding issues, fixing them, and then moving on to get the best product of the warfighter. In the course of just two weeks, we went from getting a new software load, checking it out, and to verifying that it was ready to go to the Air Force, IOC. Something that had never been done before and something that people did not think we could possibly do in such a short period of time. AF-2 was a huge success in the sense of both the gunfire as well as its loads missions. To now take the aircraft to G-limits that we couldn't before and also set up AF-2 to start its aerial gunfire testing. As always with tests, we found some issues, but that's exactly why we're here. And the team did a great job of capturing those and getting fixes in so that we can move forward and start proving out the gun to actually kill targets and help the warfighter protect ground troops and protect the aircraft and take out uh, enemies for our, both ourselves and our partners around the world. The airborne gunfire is a huge step for the Air Force and something the Air Force will need when it goes to war. We first did ground gunfire testing last year. That was the first time we've done that at Edwards in over a decade. Then we moved on to aerial gunfire. We had everything from negative G shots to high angle of attack shots to high G shots. Prove out all corners of the envelope on AF-2 and make sure that the gun would work under all conditions. It was a great testament to our ability to take products and improve upon them and make sure they're ready for the end user and make sure they're ready to go do the work this country is going to rely on us to do for decades to come. Parallel to all these other projects going on, we are working on high energy braking, high sink rate landings, and hook testing on AF-4. All these things have to do with putting the jet in situations where we hope the operator never finds themselves. We want to make sure we find the problems before they do. This was a matter of putting the jet at max gross weight and max speed, taking it across the cable, or applying the brakes in conditions where we expected something might go wrong, and that's exactly what happened. But through some great teamwork and preparation, those events essentially became non events. We saw things as serious as tires on fire, brakes melting, and tires blowing. The team was ready for this and had thought through contingencies, and when they happened, they were ready to respond. The important thing is now when a future pilot has an emergency, they have the confidence to know what the aircraft will do and have the knowledge to be able to train and plan for it. Obviously the big thing that happened this year was the WDA surge. A key piece of that was having the 3F software ready to go. The ITF was presented what seemed like an insurmountable challenge in the form of what became the WDA surge. The ITF stepped up the task in coordination with partners along the West Coast and even through the Midwest and the East Coast with the JPO. The task at hand was to prove out the kill chain from end to end for the full operational capabilities of the F-35. That involved everything from using the sensors and capabilities of the aircraft to find a target, to prosecute it, and validate that the weapon we used would actually kill the target of interest. When we looked at the schedule a year out, we realized that trying to execute that amount of work at the same pace we would normally have been doing it would have taken over two years. And we did that all in one month. That was through the great work of the folks here, lining up resources, having redundant blocks, having all our homework done in advance so that when it came time to execution, the team was just firing on all cylinders. Chester 1-1 one, one Mike, within brief parameters, you have a green range. And we're at 9 jet, controls ready, hot pass. Hornet verified. It wasn't a one month event, it was really in a whole year of build up to get to that one month. What everyone saw external to the ITF was the one month of actual weapons drops. It gave the senior leadership in DOD and the Air Force the confidence that the jet was ready for Air Force IOC as well as to continue moving forward and 
more complicated scenarios as we get ready for FOC. surge allowed us to move the progress of the F-35 software almost six months to the left and find issues before they got to the warfighter.